Hi guys. Uh, so I brought myself to Santa Barbara today. Um, I'm here on a business trip, but I thought I would document a little bit of, of my day. And I just wanted you guys to spend the day with me and see if you like it. So, let's go. Also, full disclaimer, I, I know I don't look it because I don't really, I'm really good at regulating my emotions um, in the short term. So, the thing about me is that I'm actually really, really, really anxious right now. I, I'm shooting tomorrow. I'm shooting a couple of scenes with, with some of my uh, fellow actors. And it's for my reel. And I'm so nervous because uh, I hate learning lines. And I think honestly, like, it's because when I was in school, when I was a little girl, um, like homework time was like a miserable time for me and I remember just being like depressed and bullied like and don't get me wrong I love school because I got so much out of it I feel like it really set me off for success because I I'm a very studious person I love learning but every time I sit down to learn lines I like get flashbacks of like being alone and like it's just like it's something I have to overcome I think I think it's called somatic trauma if anybody here has some somatic trauma tips, let me know. Um, but yeah, I think that's why I don't like learning lines. But but yeah, that's something I'm dealing with today. So I'm going to have to learn these lines and I'll let you guys know how it goes. So um, being in Santa Barbara County, I actually walked into an entire wine cellar. Uh, so in Santa Barbara, um, it's known as one of the wine counties of Los Angeles. and there's not, is one of the wine counties of California, essentially, like Napa Valley and Sonoma Valley. But look, this is all wine. This is so pretty. So I was inspired to buy some Manischewitz for my grandma because she, she really, really likes it. Not because of anything, simply because it's sweet and she likes candy. And it's the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest wine in the world. So I'm gonna buy some for her. Look at, check this out. Like, this is crazy. Personally, my favorite drink is whiskey. Uh, Jack Daniels is pretty much my go-to. Other stuff is more, is more high-end. A weird reason why I like whiskey. I like whiskey because I, my first time on set in, in Hollywood, I was an extra for, for Westworld. And because I fit the look of the, of the era, I became like a, a recurring extra. And um, on set, it's true, they have fake, uh, they have fake alcohol and they have fake cigars so that you can look like you're doing a Western, but they don't want the actors and the extras to, you know, get like choices and all that. Like God knows they have enough problems on set for that, but um, so what they would do is they would get whiskey and they would get like non-alcoholic whiskey and they would pour it to us and they would give it to us like, um, all nights. Like they would give us spirits and they would give us whiskey. And because like I associate like the thrill of being like on those big sets, like when I was really young with like, like fake whiskey and like spirits, like I really, really like that type of stuff because... I think it got cemented in my brain that like, like kind of like the, th the thrill of like, you know, the dream, you know what I mean? So I should get out of here because I'm just annoying everybody, but this is my grandma's favorite wine. She's going to be so happy when she sees me. And might I add, in Los Angeles, pavilions aren't that like great in LA people kind of like Whole Foods and stuff like that but because Santa Barbara is more like a we move here to retire town I I think like mm, pavilions is popping you know pavilions is where it's at it's lit so something you guys need to know about me is that I'm a tourist and by that I mean I'm actually a tourist like I'm a creature of habit you know how they say Tauruses like are really good with money. They love luxury and all that stuff. That's really true. 
but something that is really true is that we are really really good with money so what that looks like for me is that um since i am on a budget like any reasonable young person young adult whatever adult grown woman whatever you want to call me um i carry like a bottle of cold brew in my car <laughs> and i know it sounds gross i know you guys are like marley i I thought highly of you. Now I think poorly of you, and that's fine. You, you you have a right to think poorly of me. But I do carry like a gallon of water and like a big bottle of, of concentrated cold brew in my car. And what I do is I, <laughs> I make my own cold brew. And sometimes it, it doesn't taste so good. Sometimes it tastes really good. I think I'm a genius. But it's something that I do to save money because I used to be somebody who spent like two to four thousand dollars on cold brew a year, right? Yeah, that's too much, right? Tauruses are also creatures of habit, so if I pick up a habit, I'll keep doing it. Like, I will be relentless, it's just in my nature, and that's really, really good for some things, but for some things, it's really, 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 really bad, and it's just because that's my nature. Um, so uh, I flipped it around and now I, instead of spending $4,000 a year on cold brews, I, I don't do that. I spent very, I spent like probably like $200 a year on coffees and cold brews and I drink the same amount of coffee. So, so yeah, that's something that, uh, I don't know if that's girl math or something, but it's free. It's free. That's girl math. It's free. I drink coffee for free. And the reason I told you guys that long-winded story is because I found a really cute cafe called Merci, which I think means thank you in Spanish. No, no, Italian. Italian. And I'm kidding, French. Um, and I want to come here. And that's, that's the only way I... Oh, go ahead. That's the only way I justify such slavish expenses. As you can see, I was very successful. I got, what did I get? I got a cold brew. It was very small, but the boy, the boy, the man told me that it was very strong. Um, so I'm gonna trust him and, and it was, it is strong. Uh, good day to you. And then I got a gluten-free peanut butter cookie. I used to be gluten-free before, but not anymore because I'm lazy when it comes to gluten. Uh, but yeah. Hi. And so here I am studying in my car. I was always terrible at studying and now I am still terrible at studying. So if any students are watching me, you got this. The trick to studying is accepting you're terrible at it, if, if you're like me, stating it out loud, and then letting it go and doing it anyways. Because the thing with lines is you don't gotta be perfect, you just gotta do it. It's just consistency. And yeah, I mean, I'm not getting my serotonin boost. So wish me luck and I'll see you guys in, in a few hours. Oh, cool. I still have memory. Yeah, okay, so um, I'm not going to be wearing this, but I'm headed to to the set of where we're going to shoot. One of the most horrible things about being an actor is that you can never find your sets or your locations. It's the vein of my existence. Once I walked into a, the wrong side. Hi guys. Um, so a little bit of an update on the sides. Uh, as you see, I was forced to kind of like put in a little effort, put in a little bit of effort in makeup because I'm filming some scenes. Luckily for me, I'm playing characters that are kind of like outcasts and anarchists and down on the dumps and small town investigators. So, so nothing too done up, thank God. 
because that's kind of like the type of characters that I'm going for right now at this stage in, in my career, at least for television. Uh, for film, it can be more diverse, thank God. Um, but uh, right now, like I had to put in a little bit of makeup and yeah, I'm here at Los Angeles's Griffith Park and I just filmed the first scene where I played a detective and I played like a mini version of Kate Winslet in The Mayor of Easttown. Um, I kind of channeled her and studied her, and I also, uh, played a little bit, like, Silence of the Lambs, like, Jodie Foster's character, how, you know, she was, like, yeah, she was vulnerable and, and maybe more fragile than, like, Hannibal Lecter, but she was standing her ground, and, and she knew what she was there for, and she had a good head on her shoulders, so in my scene, I, my co-star is a guy that's like 6'5 and, you know, built of, full of muscle, right? And he's playing a farmer and he's guilty and I'm interrogating him and I'm a small town detective. So I kind of put myself in those shoes and, and I'm 5'6. Like, that's not too shabby, but like, if you're gonna go up to a dude that's 6'5 full of muscle and you're gonna accuse him of a crime and show him that you're the law... Yeah, you need, a, you need to grow a pair of ovaries. You can't just do that, you know? So I had to, like, really get into that character because I'm, I'm just playing a total badass. And I, I played it, and I, I feel really good about the takes. Um, hopefully, uh, my cast and my, my people that shoot, hopefully they'll say hi to you guys, and hopefully we could get a few snippets of, of me acting on set um, because I'm going to go in for scene number two. And scene number two is more fun because I play kind of like a, like a Divergent character, like Shailene Woodley in Divergent. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys like it. And scene three is is a little, I play like a train wreck that, you know, went out for a girl's night out, gone wrong. And, and you know, that stuff is going to be good for like shows like NCIS and like, um, I don't know, procedurals and stuff like that, like cop shows. So, so stay tuned. Yeah. But look, this is what it, it takes a village, like, it takes a village, it's like, it's hours and hours of prep, and, um, and just getting everything ready, like, from the shoes, to, like, is she wearing jewelry, is she wearing earrings, like, if she's a drug addict, like, she shouldn't be wearing earrings, because a drug addict would probably sell the earrings for drugs, like, it's all in the details, guys, like, so much work goes into television, um, I'm ranting. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh my god, guys. I literally just finished shooting. Uh, I finished shooting for six hours, and the last scene, I had to have running mascara because I was a special victims unit, so... So that ended, and, and I'm so... I'm so grateful for everybody who, who helped me put together this film project. I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to show you guys. I'm going to include some pictures in there. And uh, yeah, thank you for sticking with me. But now that I finished filming, my anxiety is over. So I'm going to see if I can go and, and enjoy myself and, and prioritize myself and take care of myself and do something for myself because I haven't done anything for myself in a while. So yeah, don't neglect yourself, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls, everybody in between.